Okay, so this is the second episode of a series of episodes about how you can uh, build custom copilot with Copilot Studio. Uh, consuming uh, uh, SharePoint online or OneDrive uh, uh, files content. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how you can publish uh, a custom copilot, uh, for example, in Teams, uh, in order to make it possible for your end users uh, consume uh, uh, your content and your custom copilot uh, easily. So uh, this is the context. You have a custom copilot. You want to consume SharePoint online data or OneDrive data, and you want to have it as a chatbot available in Teams with single sign-on capabilities to give a better user experience to your end users. So now I'll move to the uh, demo environment and step-by-step step, we are going to configure everything that we need uh, to accomplish this task. So first of all, let me go here, and this is my uh, Copilot Studio console. Here I have a bunch of uh, custom copilots that I have already uh, defined, and I have one which is called HR Copilot Demo, which is the one we are going to work uh, with uh, in this uh, uh, demo today. And uh, just to give you an idea of what the final goal will be, uh, it is to have uh, the Copilot uh, uh, chatbot inside the Teams so that we can ask uh, questions to Copilot, uh, to the custom Copilot, and get back answers based on the content of documents that we have uh, in a SharePoint online site, which in my scenario is an hypothetical HR website where we have a bunch of documents about uh, HR-related stuff. Okay, that's the uh, context and the goal that we want to achieve. So in order to do that, uh, as like as we did in the previous episode, and I would invite you to give an eye to that one as well to dig into the uh, details, uh, I have uh, a custom copilot that I have created. But now and today, we need to slightly change the uh, registration process to enable this custom copilot to support uh, the publishing in Teams and the single sign-on. So first of all, in order to properly configure your copilot, you need to uh, set up the authentication uh, of the uh, custom copilot. So you need to choose if you want to consume uh, SharePoint Online or OneDrive data, a manual authentication, and you will have uh, to configure an application in Azure Active Directory. Uh, we have seen already these steps uh, in one of the uh, previous episodes. So let me go to uh, Azure Entra ID and let me create the registration of an application, which can be, for example, HR uh, Copilot demo and will be the reader application that I'm going to create. And while registering this application, it can be a singular multi-tenant one. I can copy the redirect URL from Copilot Studio, which I will use to configure a web application authentication for my uh, Entra ID application. And once I've done that, I can use the client ID of my application in the client ID settings uh, of my custom copilot in Copilot Studio. Then I can go and double check in the authentication section that I have the proper redirect URL, and I can enable the access token and the ID tokens uh, uh, from uh, an authentication flow point of view. So that then in the certificate and secret, I can create a client secret for my application. I'm going quite fast here because it is something that we have already covered uh, previously, but we needed to go uh, through all of the steps uh, and to get to the single sign-on uh, part of the story. So let me copy the share secret and I will paste the share secret uh, in the settings, uh, in the uh, authentication settings of my application. And then I will need uh, in Azure Entra ID to configure for my application a set of, of API permissions. First of all, from uh, a security point of view, I want to stress the information that we are going to configure. Microsoft delegated permissions. So every single user will be able to access only the document that they have access to. And I will select the open ID and profile uh, permissions. Plus, I want to have a sites.read.all because I want to be able to read the sites as well as the files. And all of them will be delegated permissions. So once I've added them, I can grant them so that the end users will not have to do an explicit grant when they will start using our chatbot in Teams. And now that I have done that, I can uh, just save the settings in the custom authentication in Copilot Studio. And so far, we are exactly where we were last week when we created uh, 
our custom uh, copilot. Now that I have done that, I can go to publish and publish my custom copilot so that this initial setup will be uh, written in stones and made available through uh, Copilot Studio. But now what I want to do is to publish this uh, custom copilot in Teams. So it takes a while to do the initial publishing, but once it will be done, I will be able to uh, go to the channel section that you see right here. So go to channels and from here I can choose uh, one or more of the uh, available channels that I want to use to make my custom copilot available and my target as I said is Teams so if you click on Microsoft Teams you can turn on the Teams channel which means that this custom copilot will become available and uh, uh, ready to be used in Teams. What does that mean? Well first of all we can properly configure a set of additional details for our bot, which will be uh, available in Teams. So by clicking on edit details, we can change the icon, we can change uh, the uh, reference color for the icon that will be used to represent our custom copilot. We can provide a description, a long description, and so on and so forth. But by clicking on the more button right here, and selected more, you can configure all the developer information if you have uh, a, a website, a privacy a page, a terms of use page and stuff like that. And you should do that uh, if you are creating a solution for your own company or for your customers. And then there is a section uh, right here in the lower part of this uh, advanced details section where you can configure additional settings which will become useful to enable single sign-on in Teams. So how can we get those settings? First of all, again, we need to copy a reference value, which is the app ID for our uh, custom copilot application. So let me copy this value in the clipboard. We go back to Entra ID, and from here, we can go to the Expose an API section. And in the Expose an API section, we are going to configure a bunch of settings so that we will make it possible for the app that we just created to support single sign-on. First of all, we need to configure a unique URI to expose a custom API in our app. So let me click on Add, and the uh, URI that we need to use, it has to be with the following format. So API followed by both ID dash and the unique ID that we just copied from the Copilot Studio. So this will be my reference value, okay? Then once we have done that, we can create a custom scope so that we will enable the consumers of our application to consume the app, providing a specific access token with the scope that we are going to create right now. The scope name can be whatever you want. In my scenario, it can be, for example, hr.read, because I want to make it possible for consumers to have the permission to read my HR data. But the name, again, can be whatever you like. It will be a scope that can be consented by admins and users. And here I'm just a lazy developer, so I will simply copy and paste the same value. In a real solution, you should provide a good description and a good display name. But as I said, I'm a lazy developer. And I will add my scope. OK, once I've done that, this information about the uh, scope will be uh, useful because we are going to grant the uh, applications used by Teams, so the desktop and web and mobile application of Teams, will be automatically granted to, uh, and authorized to use this permission scope for this application. So by clicking on the Add a Client application, we start with the desktop and mobile application. This is the unique ID, you will find it in the uh, official documentation, so you don't need to memorize it. But if you want, it's a good exercise, up to you. And we can reference the desktop and mobile application ID for Teams, and we authorize our custom permission scope for that application. And then we do the same for the web application of Teams. So we click Add a Client again, we provide the ID of the web app of Teams, and we still grant the same, we do the authorization of the same scope. Now that we are done with that, we copy in the clipboard the uh, either the unique URI or the uh, permission scope. And we go back here. And in this UI, we need to provide the unique URI right here, so this information. 
the client ID, which we can get from the overview panel of our application right here. And we save again the settings of our uh, team uh, channel for our custom copilot. Once we've done that, we need to go back to the security settings. Sorry, there is a bit of a back and forth in the UI, but it is what it is. We go to the authentication section again, and here we have a field which I intentionally left blank before, which is the token exchange URL. Now, despite the name, which looks like a URL that we are going to use or to consume as an API, actually in this field, we need to provide the permission scope, the custom permission scope that we created for our application, which means that we need to go back here in Entra ID, back to the expose an API section. We copy this value and we paste it here. So this will be the custom permission scope of our application, which will be used by the uh, backend infrastructure of Copilot Studio during the single sign-on phase in order to leverage the on behalf of Flow and to get an access token on behalf of the currently connected user. So the user who is consuming our bot, our custom Copilot, for example, in Teams. And that uh, access token on behalf of the user will have uh, the permission scope to consume our API. But in our custom copilot, we also want to consume SharePoint online content. So when uh, making a request for an on behalf of token, we will also need to specify that we want to get a, a, on behalf of a, a token, not only for our custom permission scope, but also for the permission scopes, which will make it possible to consume the SharePoint online data. So I'm adding the sites.read.all and the files.read.all permission scopes to this list of permission scopes. And I can save again my application, my authentication settings, sorry. And once it's saved, I can close this one, oops, don't leave and save again. Okay, done. Now we can go to publish and we need to publish the custom copilot again because we need to make all of these new settings available again uh, inside the uh, public registry of the uh, custom copilots and in the environment that we are targeting. Now that the publishing uh, is uh, done, we can go back to the channels you can do from here or from here either way works and if you go back to the microsoft teams channel you can go to availability options and from here you can make your choice about how you want to make your custom bot available to the end users and here you have multiple options one is to just copy the link which will target the custom bot and you will provide the link to the target users and they will be able to start using your bot I will show you uh, shortly how you can do that. Or you can click on the show to my teammates and shared users. So this one uh, will be an option that will allow you to share the app to a specific set of users or show to everyone in my organization, which will make your application registered and available as an app in the uh, Teams app catalog of your target tenant, which is uh, what I have done in my scenario for uh, two other sample uh, custom copilots that I created in this demo environment. Once you choose, for example, the show to everyone in my organization, the app will be uploaded to the uh, apps of Teams. So if you go under admin.teams.mysol.com, team apps, manage apps, there you will find your application and you will have to publish the application. So I can do that for the sake of showing you what happens. So let me do that. Let me submit for admin approval. It means that in a matter of few seconds or minutes from now, the app will show up in the apps of Teams and we will be able to approve and publish the application in our uh, store, uh, Teams apps store. 
The fourth option that you have uh, in the previous UI allows you to download a zip file, which will include the manifest file, uh, the Teams manifest file, and the icons for your application, so that you can do the manual publishing in uh, any of the target uh, uh, tenants where you want to reuse the application. As I said, it takes a while to do the publishing in the App Store, and hopefully now it is almost done. It is almost done. And now we can see that it is waiting for approval. So if I'm lucky enough, I can go back here and I can refresh my list of apps and search for HR Copilot again. So let me do that. Let me change the view and let me search again. And hopefully it will be already there. Yes, it is. So HR Copilot demo is now here. As you can see, it is blocked right now, but I can click on it. And as an admin, I can choose to uh, reject or publish the application. If I will publish the application, it will become available to all of my users when they will go to Teams and they will add an app from here. But it will take minutes not one or two minutes, maybe more than that. So I'm not going to uh, make you wait for that time right now. And that's why I have already created in my uh, demo environment, a couple of uh, uh, other HR Copilot samples, one with the single sign-on experience, as like as I just showed you, and another one without the single sign-on experience. So now I'm switching to a demo user that I have, and I'm almost done then. And I will first of all show you the user experience when you don't have the single sign-on configured. So this is the uh, URL that you can use to directly activate a custom copilot in Teams uh, without uh, going through the whole process of registering the app. Uh, here I am with a user, uh, a hypothetical user called Julie Red, and I can add the uh, HR copilot with no single sign-on. The no single sign-on experience will provide to the end user this experience. So the user will have to click on the login button and by clicking on the login button, there will be a kind of a dance. There will be a new tab opened. And then once it will be closed, we will get back a welcome message from the Copilot Studio and the user is now authenticated. On the contrary, if you use the single sign-on experience, and let me do that, and then I'm almost done. Again, we open it, we use the web experience, we add the application and once it will be added to my uh, user experience, as you can see, I don't have to click the login button, but I'm right there ready to consume my custom copilot with single sign-on because I already have my access token with the on behalf of Flow, which has been created for me with all of the permission scopes needed to consume my target uh, custom copilot. So that said, let me briefly switch back to the slide there. This was a backup plan in case of any uh, need. Uh, I pre-recorded the uh, running solution. This is a recap that I leave just for your reference. So all of these steps you need to go through in order to register and publish a custom copilot in Teams with single sign-on. And here you have a set of useful links if you want to dig uh, much more into this topic. That said, I think that's all for me. Back to you, Fabian. Thank you. Thank you.